What is up boys and girls? Just before we get into today's episode, I just want to give you guys an update on the Drift Games merch. We have a big sale going on right now. If you go in the shop right now, you can save up to 70% off. We've got hoodies, t-shirts, tons of accessories. And because we love and appreciate you guys so much, for the first 300 orders, we're going to chuck something in there for free. So I'm going to get my beautiful assistant, Lucas, to show you what you guys can get. So we have these LZ World Tour Island banners, which I don't think were ever actually on sale, but we found a box of these, so we thought we'd put these in for you guys, along with <laughs> these LZ Festival banners. Now these were actually never for sale. These were the official banners that were on the driver's cars for the LZ Festival in Ireland. And again, we just found these in a box so we thought we'd give back to you guys. So for the first 300 orders, we're gonna be adding a banner or a visor into your package. It's not included if you're buying accessories. You must buy a piece of clothing. Because the postage would be more than the price of the accessory if we were to include the banner or the visor. So grab your orders quick guys, so you don't miss out on one of these. And now we can get on to today's video. So we're starting today on a little bit of a mission. We're slowly getting back to reality after this weekend. And as you can see, cars are on the trailers, which means we're taking them all back to the Drift Games studios. And here we have the rest of the cars. Now, if you saw the previous video from Jetfest, you'll see that Dave did a lot of damage to this car. We bring that back to the studios and we'll be going through it there, along with the Corolla. Now, the Verosa, well, we stripped that for the red JZX that we took on the Euro trip, so we're just waiting for parts to get that back. We will be building that back up, and it will be going to the new Bash Invitational, along with my good old trusty Mark 1 MX-5 that Chris Rudnick drove at the LZ World Tour. Now, this car is gonna be getting a big transformation. This car has never really been built, probably it's been slowly built up over time to be a drift car, but we're stripping it right back to a shell, and we're gonna be tidying it all up and doing it properly, so that's gonna be on future episodes. Also, the engine may have finally given up, but so much has been going on, we haven't really dove into that, but we do have a new engine for it going in, so that should be good to go. But before we do anything with the cars, I'm down here with Craig, as um, I don't have a trailer license, so he's doing all the driving as usual. Uh, there's a few people that helped us a lot with the LZ World Tour, and we haven't really got around to doing anything for them because we've been so busy going off here, there, and everywhere. But it would be nice to give them a little bit of a token of a present. Now, I was up late last night doing a bit of arts and crafts. It's not a professional job, but it's the, it's the best I could do. But at the LZ World Tour, we got all the lads to sign a t-shirt, and we just thought it'd be a nice little um, something to give back to the people that helped us. So we're gonna do a bit of a run around on the way back to the studios. And as always, we um, have some more stuff to drop off to them. But if you're bringing them a gift, it's that. It softens the blow for giving them stuff. <laughs> Maybe next year they might actually answer the phone to us, so. So, lots to do today. Let's get on the road. Hello there, Jerry. So this may seem very random. For the LZ World Tour, obviously you did a lot of work on Hertz car, last minute as usual, and worked. Wait, wait, is this, is, 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 have a car on the trailer out there now that you're tricking me with? No, I don't. We, we, we have, actually. Well, we do have a car on the trailer. We, we do have a car, but, <laughs> but, but that's not for you. But this is a little bit of a token of appreciation to you for doing some late hours and taking on our stupid calls and last minute things and all the look. Anyways. Yeah, Joey. Jesus. This is all the guys from the World Tour. Just a, li a little bit of a token for you. That's deadly. And oh, I, thanks a million. I really and appreciate it. And I apologize. It. I made these last night and I realize I'm not a professional at it. So you may want to re-iron it and do it <laughs> again. I won't be wearing it. Don't worry. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, thanks a million. Don't make me cry on camera. I'm all about masculinity. Don't make me cry on camera, lads. <laughs> oh. No, no, seriously. Lads, thanks a million. That's deadly. Oh, God. It's all going off. Hello. They to hold a goose. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen geese and goats in the same place at the same time. Goats aren't happy about it. The black one really doesn't like the geese. And the geese kind of bully the brown goat, it's funny. <laughs> Can't come here without seeing the goats and the super that you, you did say you were going to start this soon. Yeah, soon. 
Actually, it came up in my memories the other day. Do you know how long did I have it? Seven years. And I remember saying, when I had it in seven years, ah, six, seven months, we'll have it done, on the road. Yeah. How many people can relate to that now? Right, Joe, we're gonna love you and leave you. We, we have left, yeah. I knew there was a catch. There always is. Anna, thanks very much, lads. I do appreciate it. Well, appreciate your work and ta-ra. Loads more next God, I just cut <laughs> myself in an apple tree. <laughs> right, off to the next stop. So, we are down here at DRT Automotive. So you may have seen on some of our previous videos that the guys down here did loads of work for us for the LZ Festival. They got the Verosa working, they put all new sensors, dynoed it turbos with the S14. God knows how they got that thing working. Hello. Hello, Mr. Josh. We come bearing a little bit of a gift for you. So this is a bit of a thanks for the um, work that you did for the LZ Festival and everything leading up to it. That is really cool. And I'm, so, I'm sorry that it's tagged down but again. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it's not my best it work. Before it drop. <laughs> <laughs> Token of appreciation for you for, no, again, really cool. the, the hard phone calls that we give you, no time frame. No, you never give me any hassle or, <laughs> no, there's always loads of notice and loads of sleep. But no, that's, that's really, really cool. Thank you very much. Hopefully you start answering the phone to us again now. <laughs> this is the plan, this is the plan. What's <laughs> going <laughs> next? No. Off season is going to be dangerous, I think. No, that's cool if you go on the wall now. Right, now we've done a, a nice gesture. Let's, um, elephant in the room or an elephant in the garage that I think we need to address because we came down here three months, four months ago? Seven weeks ago. What do you think your time frame is on this? Nine weeks. It is now, it's... It's actually there. It just needs to be taken apart and painted and finally assembled. Okay, I'm gonna have a route through and see if um I'm not gonna lie, I don't see any wiring here. It's Bluetooth. <laughs> well, you know what, it's a lot further along than oh, no, it's now a car. it was last time. Yeah, no, it's now a car, like all the fuel lanes are in, brake lanes are in. It's all in. Can we set a new deadline for this? The plan is now have it out for new year, but it's going to be the wildest. IS 200, 300, whatever you want to call it, in Europe, like. Well, we look forward to seeing this in the new year. New year is, you've said it now. Oh, no. You you said this. No, it will be. Realistically, no, it definitely will be out in the new year. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this thing in action. So we have two more down here, and these are for Lloyd Patson that maps all of our cars and Dara Spencer that's helped down here with a lot of the cars and helped us with the bashes and everything like that. So two people that massively helped us with a lot of our projects leading up to the LZ Fest and before that and well just continuously actually. Yeah, you may need to rearrange. I, I really should have done a better job of this to be fair. It wasn't even a quick job I spent about two hours doing all these last night and it, well there we go. <laughs> It's um, it's up there anyways, and those two are for the other lads. Thank you very much. We're gonna leave you to it, you're a busy man. No problem lads, thanks very much. Yeah, Thank you for everything. See you Thank you, see you later. I don't think we'd be very good at um, prize presenting, would we Craig? No, I don't think so, we're not Craig. We'll um, go back to our day job now, I suppose. I'm the first time I think on camera I've said this. Back to the studio. Oh, nice! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> there it goes. I think this is, for the first time since we first did the studios, every car that we own, give or take, is here. Pretty much, or as full as it can be. Yeah, we obviously have the drift cars that are kind of taken apart and everything like that, but this is our whole fleet all together. And Adam is here to, well, go through it, update you guys. Some of the information that we give you, you may already know, but we've had a lot of new viewers recently, so we're gonna take it back to the start and walk through our entire fleet, up and coming plans, projects, 
and much more with you guys. Right, so just had to, to add a bit of linear to this video. We're gonna start with the drift cars because they were the most recent thing in the videos. And after the event, we didn't really go through it, but we are gonna go through and dive into all the damage that Dave did <laughs> on this, what was supposed to be a show car. First off, um, the front of the car, well, it's, um, this side is, it's not gonna rub off. Like this side, mint. This side had a bit of a tump. The more I look at it, splitters, non-existent. There's a lot of cracking in this carbon fiber. So that's, there is supposed to be parts of the car that are here that are now on it. It's not a half The skirt. side skirt. It's a, it's a mini skirt. Ooh, it's a mini skirt. That makes it sound much be be better than it is. Broken skirt. <laughs> the, the, car, the Corvette's got a mini skirt now. It's moving on to the back. The back panel, which is new this year, that's now wrecked. That was a couple of hundred quid. Yeah. A couple of hundred quid? That was easy within the five, six, seven hundred. There's the custom made Darren pieces. That's wrecked from Dave. That was, that was nothing other than Dave hitting the wall. Put in the cool clip here. So a lot of damage on this side of the car, and I'm not gonna lie, this, the other side, um, well, it is actually undamaged. Right, moving on to the other two drift cars, which the Corolla was drove for the first day of Japfest, and Tully Roan, and my car was drove for both the days. And to be, there, there is damage on both of them, but considering Tully Roan's a fully war track, and there's two days of Japfest with pro drivers and everything, there's not too much damage done. No, consider me not. There's only a broken tail light, a few scuffs. What it's you not is, too bad. The, the, all, all the scene boys in, in America actually pull the lenses Do off. They? And like they make like clear lenses. Cause it is what is yours trying to be half cool, Josh. And then apart from that, there's, well, I mean, my side skirt. Mine's a, mine's a chewed skirt. What happened here? Uh, that was a cone. I um, I was in deep. That was an outer zone, but. So if you hit the cone with that part, you are very out of outer zoned tree. And there's a few bits of fiberglass that are kind of chewed up, but as I said, now this car is a drift car. So next year we'll be doing a, fingers crossed, if all the dates align, we're going to be doing a full season of IDC with this. And you know what? I'm not really going to repair it. I'm going to leave it the way it is, a little bit battered. And that will only encourage you to go closer. And moving on, Two, the soon to be removed LZ MFG wrapped Corolla, which, I mean, this is actually, this, I mean, this is the only bit of damage that it's actually got. But to, and to be fair, we should do a little bit of explaining as well, because there has been some comments about that and people are like, oh, it's not Adam's car. I think Dave did explain it a little bit before. We bought the car. We, we do own the car. Uh, Adam did drive it at the LZ Festival or LZ World Tour in Ireland earlier this year, but it is a Drift Games car. So the LZ wrap will be coming off and I'm sure something else will be going on. Right, where should we move to next? Shall we move on to the S15? So the 4GSE-T S15. So the engine out of a MR2 turboed inside of an S15. So this was recently in the content. So for any of you, that don't know and we're actually going to put all the videos in the playlist if you want to go back and watch from the car that it was to what it is now this was a automatic non-turbo sr20 and well the the outside isn't half as dramatic as the underneath even though it's got full custom strong wheels it's got a full aero kit side skirts under lips spoilers but the real uh, magic of this car is, Adam, reveal it. This is, this is where the magic happens. So pretty much Darren down at Group D did all the work on this. And his plan was to make the perfect S15, which in his eyes was putting a Toyota still four cylinder in it and making it drive, not like a drift car engine swap, but one that actually feels like it came from the factory like this. And to be fair, like it's gone on. It's, it's, by, it's just much like my, my MX-5, I spoiled the little out of control. So yeah, we're gonna put the videos into a playlist. There's about five or six videos on this car, so you can catch up if you wanna know all the ins and outs of this build. Moving on. When everyone comes down here, this is just like the hangout spot. The funny thing is we had the open day, we brought all of our friends and family in and literally everybody sat, like was more attached to this. For the people that don't know, this is our podcast van. So we actually, 
Well, we've actually slacked on it a little bit recently because we've been away so much. We do usually do one podcast a week, which is on Spotify. And for the YouTube members that we have, um, it's actually the video versions on there as well for those guys. Right, let's try and get through with the rest of these cars. There is my car, which is a Turbo 2 RX-7. So this car, again, I put the videos all into a playlist. Uh, this was a, well, what was the way that the interior was described? Mutilated is the only way that, that the previous owner had done it. And if I would say so myself, it's not too bad on the outside, on the inside. It's turned, out to be, turned, out, turned out to be a cracking car. So I'm going to be tinkering up. I'm going to be doing what's known on the channel as a Adam O'Connor in it. Do the little bits, do the tiny little bits. Just there are the tiny little details that are yeah, You get the small reward, I like the big thing, I like the kits, the wheels, everything that you get, the big room. Way more enjoyment out of a tiny little like, engraved stupid little piece on a car. That's where I get my enjoyment out of cars. I guess we're a bit different in that way. So, if you want to see that from start to finish, I put all the videos on a playlist so you can watch them back to back. These two, the two PS13s, which well, one, I'm not even sure we need to go through this. This is the uh, Spirit Ray car, which won the T Tokyo Auto Salon, got built by Spirit Ray, the company itself, and it's kind of been called the most perfect S13 in the world, and it's not really changed much since then. Everyone still loves this car the way that it is. No one wants, people say you would ruin it if you were to change it. Yeah. So it's kind of a... And then, then do you go to full hog of a full insane restoration? and just painted the same colour and no one even knows that you painted it. Which, is, which brings me on to the red car. This car was bought pretty much because Dave didn't want to modify the Spirit Ray car, so he bought this car to make his version of the best PS13 in his eyes. So pretty much this was kind of bought as a standard-ish looking PS13. And what Dave did was take the whole body off the car and widen it by a ridiculous amount. A lot. And then we went, only this year, Chris from, CS, from Strong Wheels went, look, I can make you full custom wheels of pretty much anything you actually want. And then these and, were... And then Dave went, I'll have a bit of that. And then, so Dave literally designed up a forged wheel or said like, kind of a rough design to Chris. Then the boys, the boys in Strong Wheels put together a design, make them exactly the way you want them, give you exactly the ET, exactly the specs, everything. So that's where you can get literally perfect fitment from literally full custom stro forward strong wheels. So moving on, this is the newest car to our fleet, I believe. This is the R32, which is a RB20 turbo. So this was kind of built as a somebody doing up a car. A lot of the hard bits have been done, but the paint was a bit rough on it and everything like that. So it was kind of a job of put it back together, spraying it, and then this is what became of it. Love the standard interior that so like like the full the full bucket seats and everything it's kind of gone like you want you want the old squishy seats and you want them in good condition and as everyone uh, gives out to us on the comments um don't, don't push the glass there you go there's gonna be a lot of angry people out there with that one right the datsun the forgotten child this really is the forgotten child this got built over a year it got released over a year ago if, if this car was in america you would have seen this car very quickly, but because we're in Ireland and it was a race V8 on the road, very specialist engine, very specialist issue, which turned out to be a very small issue, no one knew how to fix it. And it kind of just got passed them around or did no one wanted to kind of own it. Whereas if in America, you probably just would have given it to the guy down the corner and he would have been able to fix it in two seconds. So it kind of went away for a little while. We didn't want to run it because it was a very expensive engine and it's fixed now. So the standard Streetline 6 has been replaced with a big V8. So this thing, Dave claims that this is one of the fastest cars in the fleet. We're yet to really have this on the road to see properly, but in the near future, we'll be testing this out with, um, against a few of the other cars to actually see how fast this thing is. One car we don't have to refine because it's pretty much perfect. Yeah, this is, um, this is the most perfect car in the fleet because it's modern it drives perfect it's got every kind of sensor adaptive cruise control it does literally everything adaptive cruise control automatic steering automatic full headlights full comfort mode full car play 500 horsepower looks the business goes absolutely it goes into every car park it's just a lovely car it is it's the perfect modified daily in our eyes it's got only a street hunter wing again custom strong wheels these are 
the same as the ones on the red ps different spec different paint it's got a full rear side and front lip kit and from the most practical to the most impractical car it may look like a truck but it's not a truck because it's everything else it's ma it's insane this thing also this also fell into our hands because dave was looking around dave is the king of facebook marketplace and the king king of done deal some person some lunatic has built this in america somehow made it to ireland some person for some reason was selling it as an s10 which is a galaxy s10 a phone uh, it's a c10 short body and it was very cheap and we couldn't pass up the deal so we're refining it and keeping it as a little as a little fun project because i do want to see this pull the corvette that, that that is the dream of ours that that is what we want but this car is very new to the fleet it's gone down to dean motors the shop downstairs to get a few teething issues because it did try and kill dave when the Tra throttle locked on in traffic and he had to yeah. do a burnout and turn the car off and everything yeah, it like that it would stick into gear and he went to stop and it would fire it literally lit the tires up on the motorway and it wouldn't stop itself that is a couch there it's really comfy it is is honestly like a bench cruising around america got a dog beside me here just absolutely flying along this is great you know what that it, it actually suits you i think it suits you a lot more than dave if i'm gonna be honest so that is a quick brief through of all the cars hopefully that's uh, you guys a little bit more caught up with what's going on with these cars up until this point but along with all the cars as a project we have this whole studio that we haven't really done anything with since we've had it partly because we've haven't actually been here that much. We launched it for the LZ World Tour in Ireland in the middle 22nd, 23rd of July of 2023, and we've pretty much been gone ever since. We have the, our own room that we haven't really done much with, which is our car -cade. I'm Very excited about this. So pretty much this was our big arcade room with simulators, and we're gonna make it all cool with neons and everything like that. But we kind of ran out of time when we we're building the place and we said we we're going to do the update on the channel. So this will be getting started after we come back from our Australia trip. We have loads of ideas and crazy things that we want to do with this place. But also I put it out to you guys. What do you guys want to see us there? Do you want to see a full car simulator? Do you want to see simulators built into God knows what skeleton frames out of metal or oh, RC oh. tracks coming from the roof? I, that, go, go mental. That was actually an idea. We're actually figuring out having an RC drift track fall from the roof but if you can figure that out get get onto us which also leads us on to our next thing we want to talk about which is inviting you guys down here obviously when we launched the place we said we're going to have everyone down here and it's going to be open all the time but unfortunately we haven't been here that much so we can't really have you guys down without us but we are definitely in the works of we're not sure what fully what we're doing yet, but we want to do some sort of a car meet, invite some special people down with cars and groups and crews and everything like that. Like a cars and coffee to a meet to a, we don't, we don't really know, but that, that is in the works and it's coming around Christmas time. So a nice little Christmas, Christmas surprise. So just before we wrap up this video, I put it out on Instagram earlier about answering a few questions where a few of you may, we may have missed it on the content or a few things that you guys wanted to know. So we just want to address a few things that you guys have been asking. I have the questions here from the, from the, from the internet. Uh, someone we've already addressed who owns the 86. It's, is it shared? No, it's all, it's all ours. Adam doesn't own it. Are you doing any drift competitions? You've already, already confirmed that. You're, the, plan, the plan is to do a full season of IDC next year. One of the questions someone's asking, why have we clickbaited our videos so recently? And the problem is we don't want to clickbait our videos. We don't want to exaggerate the truth of our videos. Fortunately, that's kind of the way that you have to go to YouTube because all you have is the title and the thumbnail to get the interest, to get the interaction, to get the algorithm going. So unfortunately, I don't think we do it too bad, if I'm going to be honest. Not as bad as loads of other people. But unfortunately, we have to manipulate the truth in maybe a different, more questionable way to get you intrigued to watch the video. So apologies if you're a long-term viewer and you don't like it, but it's have the better interest to get a new viewership into the videos. Someone asked, will, will we be in Melbourne? We will be in Melbourne for the LZ World Tour in about a week, so you can meet us there if you're in, if you, if you're, 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 you're down under. Another shrimp on the barley? That's just in an English accent. <laughs> Someone has mentioned the mer merchandise cost as well, which I want to, want to address, because I know like, years and years ago, I think we, when I first started out doing the merchandise, I think hoodies were 55 euro a hoodie and now they're up to 70 euro hoodie. Times have changed because unfortunately when there was 55 euro hoodie, we were still getting clothes from the UK, then Brexit happened. So 
prices have gone up, but so is quality, because we did actually use one garment and we were very, very picky, and we can pick a lower quality, quality garment to reduce the price, but we stick high quality. One thing we also, I'm very picky about and we actually have, we have stuck probably longer at this than way more than we should. Everything is made in Ireland. We get the, we get the, gar the garments shipped to Ireland. We get them literally pr screen printed in-house. That was actually one thing when Jimmy and the guys were here, they were figuring out, it's like literally screen print in Ireland, which is nuts that someone does that down the road for us to, to such a high quality. And out of all the suppliers we've used over the years, like Flex Print and Navin is the best we've used. The quality is unbelievable. Screen printing, unbelievable. Customer service, unbelievable. Turnaround, unbelievable. So we try to give you the best quality product. And that's why, unfortunately, the prices are a little bit higher, but you pay for it because you get good quality. And on that positive note, we're going to end the video here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully this hasn't dragged on enough. Hopefully you guys are up to date. Looking forward to our future plans that we have on the channel. I'm going to finish the vlog with a question for you guys. One question from our subscriber. Is a Jaffa cake a, J a cake or a biscuit? That's a thinker. <laughs>